Hi there, and welcome to Canceling COVID. I'm Tanya Rivens. I love my intro music as well. Uh, thank you for joining me. We got the sun out today. Wow, what an exciting start to our Friday. This is a place for real people to have real talk and get real sources to safely navigate COVID-19. Of course, uh, thoughts and prayers. I mentioned the, the sun shining here, but you know, our, our brothers and sisters in Texas and Tennessee and other areas dealing with ice and snow. So um, they'll get through that just like we're going to get through uh, COVID-19. Uh, there's a major slowdown in the race to vaccinate and the severe weather that I just alluded to has delayed vaccine distribution. Several states, including North and South Carolina, uh, have been impacted. And this makes it even more crucial to know your COVID-19 status to help contain the wide spread of the virus. And we've got a question of the day today. You know, everybody's feeling a lot better, I would like to think. The sun is shining, the rain has moved on. And so what do you miss pre-COVID? The things that you used to do, what do you miss the most? Let me just say, I miss everything, okay? <laughs> I miss the hugs, I miss hanging out, you know, dropping by family. Uh, I miss not wearing masks. I mean, I, I appreciate having to uh, wash my hands. Um, personal hygiene, as one of our guests referred to, that has really opened my eyes. You know, you wash them constantly, but of course you got to keep a good tube of lotion with you as well. But tell me, I want to hear from you. What do you miss the most uh, pre-COVID-19 things that you were doing and now you cannot do them? And we've been, gosh, over a year into this now. So I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, I'm going to bring in our first guest. It's uh, Ty and Jay Burns. They are a couple. And uh, Ty and Jay, they are the husband and wife duo behind Safe Communities Carolinas. It's a new effort to bring testing directly to your neighborhood, which is pretty awesome that they've taken on this task. And, you know, they've got a commitment to the community. So good afternoon. And uh, thank you guys for taking the time to talk with me. Good afternoon. Hey, Ty. Good afternoon. Good nice to, to see you here. all. Absolutely. So let's talk about Safe uh, Communities Carolinas. How did that come about? And what was the motivation uh, for you to co focus on COVID testing? Sure. Well, it came about because we are an Apex Leadership Company, and our company focuses on fitness, leadership, and fundraising for elementary and middle schools. And as you can imagine, uh, with, with COVID, we're not able to actually do that uh, live now. So also, too, there's a tremendous impact to our community. We've experienced, you know, death in our family as well as friends. And we know that this is in our place to, to get through this. Uh, we definitely need to uh, focus more on uh, the testing and the safety procedures that we uh, need to do. Yes, so uh, we understand that, you know, testing um, is one of the most important components in stopping the spread. So uh, we just scrambled and thought about ways that we can, you know, get involved and be a part of the solution. So we reached out to our now uh, lab partner to find out how we could get involved because they were already out in the community doing testing. And, you know, after um, some certification and training, um, we... Uh, birth uh safe communities carolinas and you two are business people uh, entrepreneurs entrepreneurs rather in your own right and so i appreciate you all you know showing the the, the caring side of how a lot of times business people can be a little rigid um, <laughs> True. Experience, although i've always operated with my heart which got me in a lot of trouble but you know the people that you serve you know what do you hear from them well, uh, it's been pretty good what we've uh, what we've been hearing so far. Uh, we do know that there's a lot of education that needs to happen as well, and mm -hmm. I think people now understand that it's important to get tested not only for them but to protect their their families, uh, you know, their coworkers as well as you know the community. So, mm -hmm. well, I appreciate uh, you serving and what you are doing. And speaking of education, that's what we really thrive to do here is try to educate our community. And I saw a report yesterday that. Uh, about 400,000 of all the lives that we have lost mm. been avoided, which is so heartbreaking. Right, um, right. And so I know it's been a difficult challenge, but there are some ways that uh, probably could have been handled a lot better. When you are out and about, how does safe communities work when you're working in the neighborhoods? So we, we're called um, collection specialists you know, lab collection specialist. So, you know, our goal is to get centralized locations where people can go and get tested as often as they need to. You know, another goal of ours is just to meet people where they are. So we'll work with, you know, any group or organization who wants to provide, you know, on-site community testing, um, whether it's a church, a uh, group home, um, home health care agencies, you know, again, we just want to get individuals tested 
um, make sure that there's always a resource that they can go to without any hassle, because uh, that's some of the feedback that we've been getting from the community. So, you know, being on this show is just very critical to getting the word out because we want people to reach out to us and ask us to come serve them and provide this testing. Now, are you limited on where you would go? Is it just in Charlotte and surrounding areas, or would you go as far as, say, Lenore or even farther to Asheville, which is, you know, about two hours? We will go where there's a need. Okay. We will go where there's a need. And I see some people hopping on. It's great to see you, Avanya Henderson. Uh, my sister, the question of the day, uh, and I'm going to put that to you all as well, but she says she misses family gatherings and going to the gym. Uh, the question of the day, again, is what do you miss pre-COVID-19? What do you miss the most? I see Karen. Now, she's out of Newton. And uh, good afternoon. One good thing about mm -hmm. getting people uh, to hop on Facebook, you get to connect with those you haven't seen or talked yes. to. Right. Thank you, Karen, for hopping on. I haven't uh, seen or talked to you in a while. But let's talk about some of the goals. What is, you know, the end result? You kind of talked about what motivated you. But what is the end game? What are your goals in uh, operating with Safe Communities Carolinas? Yeah, sure. We're... Our goal is actually to provide or make sure there's available testing to anybody who wants to actually get tested. We like to have uh, community spots set up so that they can go and get tested and have stationary places where they'll be there, where they need to get tested, you know, monthly, weekly, or daily. And they'll have that option uh, in the communities that are, that are underserved. Right. And we also want to provide education. Um, and thank you, you know, you and I had a conversation earlier and, you know, we understand that that's a component that is missing. So the more that people understand, the safer they'll be and then they'll understand more, you know, their role in stopping the spread of the infection in their communities. And that's what I like about this. And then we were talking earlier, you know, we want people to be educated. And, you know, you make your decision from there. But as you bring people on to share how important it is that we have the knowledge. And of course, uh, one other question, the message that you give to the people uh, at home when you're out doing COVID testing, what kind of advice or what would you like to leave with them? Well, we, we tell people when we see them that it's definitely important to continue to get tested. Uh, we know we have a vaccine there and that the mm -hmm. numbers are actually lowering. But, you know, there are still people dying every day. Right. So it's still important for you to get tested uh, as well as so you know early enough so that if you need to quarantine, you're protecting your loved ones mm -hmm. as well as the community. Right. And also, you know, to continue to practice, you know, the CDC uh, guidelines, you know, wear a mask, wash your hands, practice social distancing. And I know people are saying they're getting tired of that. We're still getting some comments in. Well, Vanya says yeah. that she missed seeing beautiful, smiling faces. And that's a, oh gosh, that's so true. Something that we take for granted and have taken for granted because you can't see a smile behind the mask. And they go, well, that's you smile so with your eyes, but it's still not the same. I don't care. You can say that all you want, but it's still different. You know, when people are trying to smile and they've got a mask on, yeah. you know, you can see a little bit of light in their eyes, but. Uh, thank you for sharing that, uh, Wavanya, because that's important. I see Frederick Love has hopped on. So good afternoon. Thank you for joining us as well. Now, the Internet is full of horror stories, getting back to you all. And um, mm -hmm. uh, they talk about invasive nose swabs. Um, explain kind of the testing that you're doing. And for those who may be a little hesitant, you know, what would you say to them about getting tested? Uh, I would say ours is probably the, the simplest test that you can possibly get right now. Mm -hmm. uh, our test is a, a uh, simple uh, mouth swab, and it's called a, a molecular uh, PCR uh, test. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just simple mouth swab, and it's self-administered. And that's it. There's no, you know, no horror story here. Oh, so now is one, when you compare the nose swab to the mouth, is one more effective than the other or about the same? I would say that's a question for the lab because I don't want to misinform. Um, you know, if anyone has questions about the different types of tests, you know, please reach out to One Love Laboratory. Um, they're on Facebook and they're here locally and they can clarify that because there's many variations of the test. And, you know, we're right now expert on the one that uh, we deploy. <laughs> Well, I sure wish I had an opportunity to have taken the one with the mouth, but I will get that opportunity because it should be ongoing testing. But I've had two and it was up the nose and it was comfortable. Now, the first time it was uh, fairly comfortable. I think I went through three. I did. And mm -hmm. it's all in the person administering it as well. I think the second guy, he was like, let me just get this. <laughs> and I felt every bit of it. But the first one was a lot more comfortable, you know, to a degree because you yes. expect it. But right. yeah, that's nice to know. Now, as we wrap things up, any final thoughts or comments? I know you've got some testing coming up and uh, if you've got your website and just how people can get in touch with you. 
Okay. Um, you can find us on Facebook, um, Safe Communities Carolinas. Uh, we're also online at www.safecommunitiescarolinas. Safe you can also reach us by phone um, at 704-819-8580. We are, we are eager to serve you, to serve the community. So no matter the size of the group, just give us a call. We can definitely you know, work together, maybe collaborate with some other communities and neighborhoods and get testing um, as often as you need. Yeah. Stay safe. Stay safe. Wear a mask. <laughs> and wash your hands. And, and wash, and your, wash hands your hands. And it's practice awesome. social distancing. And, and by the way, what I miss most is family, being around family. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anything else from you guys? What do you miss most about uh, pre COVID? Anything else? Uh, um, just, you know, have a, we have two, we have two small children, two four year old twin boys, and, you know, having them to, you know, having to say, don't touch this. You know, make sure we put our mask on when we go in the store. So it makes life a little hard to navigate for young people and understand. So, you know, I'm looking forward to not having to explain doing something that they naturally do. Yeah, well, uh, Safe Communities Carolinas, Jay and Ty Burns, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, talk with us. It's great meeting you, getting to know you, and Likewise. I look forward to working with you all in the future as well. Yes, definitely. Right. Thank you, Tanya. Enjoy your day. Absolutely. And have a great weekend. All right. As we continue, it's such a beautiful couple working together in the community, and I appreciate them. The question of the day, what pre-COVID-19 things do you miss the most? And uh, I miss, uh, again, family, kind of like my sister shared, going around my mom, got to make sure I've got my mask on and, and just things that we take for granted, going in the grocery store. And I got to admit to you, uh, how many times have you stepped outside of your car and remember, I don't have my mask. So uh, you've had to make some adjustments. I know I have. You've got to throw some in the car. You got to worry about your husband and your son and anybody else to get these masks and keep them with you at all times and to keep sanitizer handy. Because one of the things I noticed about some of these teenagers, they're not washing their hands. And I speak from experience. So I try to make sure, you know, I've got plenty around the little carry cases or whatever can work. If you find something that, you know, your husband or your significant other or whoever your child really likes, and I found they like the little spray or the squirt bottle, you know, just throw it in their car to make sure they have it and, and trust that they're using it. Now, Sonia hopped on and said that she misses Sonia Jones. She missed having her family gatherings. And, you know, family is so important to so many of us. And, uh, you know, that's part of uh, nurturing and growing. And so it is tough not being able to get together with family. But we're making through it. You know, we're getting through it, folks. Uh, we've gotten through a lot more that we didn't expect to. So we'll keep pressing on as, you know, Ash Wednesday kicked off this past week. And we're going to be counting down to Easter Resurrection Sunday. So um, as we continue to check things out, we're going to move to a group of people you don't hear enough about, and that's COVID-19 survivors. I really wish we could uplift and share more. And I've been teasing that we're going to have a guest on who lost nine family members and we had to reschedule. And now I've gotten word she's lost yet another family member. So that's number 10. Ooh, can you imagine dealing with that in this day and time? And I remember she, she told me that you know, when they had the double funeral, that was the point that kind of, you know, broke her down because they're constantly losing relatives. And of course, she's from a large family. Family is family. So now um, those people that have survived, they're dealing with physical, emotional and financial issues months after their recovery. And uh, we're getting ready to talk to a guest that I've been looking forward to talking with as well. And, you know, it's really important because he felt led to say, look, I need to talk to somebody. People don't want to talk about this, and I, I want to be that vessel to share the information. And it's Joe Lowry. He's had a COVID. He got it back in July, and months later, he's still having a major side effect, which is memory loss. So, Joe, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to share this message and to make people aware, you know, of what's really going on. Thank you for allowing me to be your guest today, Ms. Ravens. Well, Joe, I appreciate that. And you better call me Tanya, okay? Okay, so, Tanya. Okay, there we go. Now, how long <laughs> were you ill with COVID-19? Uh, the latter half of July. Okay. Missed my whole birthday and everything. Oh, my goodness. Ruined your birthday celebration? I made up for it. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but in July, and so when <clears throat> did you recover? Because July, that would have been... Um, I... I I got it about July 15th. Uh -huh. I re recovered about uh, August 5th, 6th, somewhere along in there. So it took you a little over a month, I guess, or almost right. to recover. So uh, tell us about your memory loss and some of the symptoms that you've been experiencing. Well, I lost a sense of taste. I mean, it's like I'm eating chalk all the time. 
Uh, and I, you know, I, I call people like today and have a conversation mm -hmm. and maybe tomorrow I won't remember none of it. You know, uh, night sweats, can't sleep at night. Uh, I have friends that uh, they're, they're seeing shadows. I mean, it, it has a lasting effect in that uh, quarantine, man, that that kind of runs you, you. You forget a lot of things. A lot of things you used to do, you you don't even remember. And then you you get fearful of even going outside. Oh. You know, it, it takes a while to the, the the mental aspects of it is is what's weighing on me. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people aren't thinking about that, Joe. They see people survive and not not thinking. And you're right. And for people that uh, deal with loneliness, and now you're quarantined, that's really difficult. And exactly. With me, that you even. The, the medicine, the drugs they put you on, that was something that impacted you as well. It, exactly. They they put me on penicillin and steroids because the COVID brought about a upper respiratory infection. So mm -hmm. to battle that, they gave me steroids and uh, penicillin. And after I got through with the steroids, I went through a period called roid rage. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I would have a conversation with somebody and then the next day I wouldn't remember it. And then I would blast them out about some things we that I thought we had talked about, oh and I had to call them back and apologize. I said, "Look, you know this, is, you know, and and those that are in my close circle knew something is wrong, you know." And we began to talk about it, and and we understood, and that's what I encourage you and G Man to spread the word to people so folk can understand that, hey, this is not this person I talked to. You know that that I know. This is not that old person. Something's something's wrong here. And you know, Joe. Again, I salute you for uh, stepping out and saying, "Look, I want to talk about it." People act like they don't want to talk about it. What do you think that is? Why they don't want to talk? Well, people. It's so much false information out there. People, people don't want to listen to people that they don't trust. I, I listen to you, and I listen to G Man. I know you. You know me. And I did broadcast, and I know the importance of what you're doing. Black people will listen to certain black people, okay. you know, and and y'all are doing a great job. And I think it's a phobia amongst us. We we were, it was bred in us not to trust each other. Right, right. And, and that still goes today. But we got to start trusting each other when it comes to our health and our well-being. Very well said, and I can guarantee everyone we didn't pay you a dime to say that. Joe is I, just. I wish you had her. <laughs> so, you know, I, I lost my job because of COVID. So, uh, uh, well, they closed the plant down. That was that was a quote unquote excuse. Okay. Yeah, because they got because they got government money to do that. Oh, and see, that's so, another impact. That exactly, people. exactly. And we're usually the ones that are impacted the most by those type of decisions. Exactly, exactly. And, and shout out to G-Man for uh, bringing me the story and talking about it. But Joe, you deserve all the credit because you even talk, you expressed to G-Man, you know, you had it uh, to where your co-workers, when y'all were still working, listening to what well, we it, it, it was. Well, it was several of us that got it through okay. the job. See, and that's how a lot of people con contracted we had a coworker that took a trip to Myrtle Beach and then come back, and it, it was a spreader. And that was when everybody was told, don't travel. So there it is. And you know to that point, and you just, there it is, is right. Now, that's a word because I've been saying all <laughs> long because I keep saying we as individuals are trying, our families are sacrificing, but businesses, they're worried about that bottom line, and they are not exactly doing all exactly. We, they're, they're asking us to do. And in, in the return of that, there are a lot of complaints about the Department of Labor in North Carolina not investigating and following up on complaints. And so that's a problem we're trying to address this now what would you see was the was the worst part about having COVID when you had it the physical part wasn't well I couldn't breathe it cut my breath off and that was that was bad but for me the mental aspect because I never did drugs so I, I and I didn't understand the the effects of drugs mm -hmm. so I mean I thought I was going more crazy than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so what else was going through your mind though while you were battling it? Was at any point you were like terrified that you might not? Yeah, I had I had anxiety attacks. I was, mm -hmm. you know, 
you you were afraid of the, what the next moment was going to be, you know. And I still have that today. You know, if 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 I'm driving, I, I mean, it's just like I freeze up, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it is scary. It's especially working in the in the death care industry, like I do part time, and I see what the end results. It, yeah. It's a punishment just to think, oh, I could be that dead tomorrow, you know. Right. Right, right. You can, right, you know, the end result. which we could be anyway, but I don't want to die because of COVID. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's a good segue. Have you had the vaccination or do you plan to get it? I'm going to get me a gallon of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get the shot whenever they give it to me. Okay, good. Yeah. Why, why did you make the decision to do it? I want to breathe. You want to breathe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love and I want to sleep. Happens. And I want to sleep. Yeah, and you want to live, right? Yeah, yeah. But well, that comes with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, you, you have been. I knew it was going to be just a joy to talk with you, and I appreciate all the work that you're doing. And seriously, you're educating people, and that's what I love about this platform. We got people on that want to share the message. So I appreciate you for that. So now, what would you say to those people who aren't taking the virus seriously? Well, I'll see you. You'll see him at your workplace? At, at my workplace. I'll see you. <laughs> Come on down. I'll look at them. They will look at me. Yeah, and if anybody <laughs> needs any clarification, he works at a funeral home. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. get, get you over there. <laughs> hey, you can take care of him. I'll take care of him. Yes. You better take it serious because this thing, is like uh, uh, Alyssa Milano, the actress, said, it's a ghost. Yeah. And it really is a ghost. Because you you don't know where you got it from, you don't know who gave it to you, and you don't know who has it, and then you wake up with it. Yeah, so it's a ghost, and it's a, it's one that we've got to take seriously, absolutely. So any encouragement yeah. for other COVID survivors that are still dealing with uh, these lingering symptoms? I know you've got memory loss and uh, the taste and smell still gone. Intermittently, it okay. comes and goes. It comes and goes. Yeah, but I, I would tell folks call somebody, talk to them. Just have a, you know, like, like with me, I called G Man. And I said, man, look, if I say something that don't sound right, it's the medicine or, or it's just COVID. I say, you know, so we, let's talk about it. You know, and that's what we did. Good for you. Good, good. Oh. good. So now, um, we are you seeing a doctor though? Are they trying to continue to treat you about some of these side effects that are lingering? No, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. No. but I, I'm, I'm, I'm about ninety eight percent back. I still have. Some memory loss, but for the most of it, I'm, and it's nothing they really can do. Yeah, but you, you know, it, it 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 takes a little time for the steroid to wear off out of your system. Yeah, and you figure August, so it's been what about six months? So still mm -hmm. working through it. So we appreciate yeah. you so much, Joe. Is there anything else you want to share? I do want to know what do you miss most about pre-COVID? Obviously, your uh, sense of taste and smell and memory, but anything else? I know G-Man going to laugh, cause he, but I miss ranching off and then going out to the program, you know. <laughs> Country term is ranch off for about taking a bath and then go out to the program and hear some good gospel music. I miss that. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> he said he misses ranching off and uh, going out to gospel programs. I do, Well, too. that's what the old folks used to say. I'm going to ranch off and go on to the program. <laughs> Yo, it's been a thrill talking to you. Oh, wow. Thank you for <laughs> a wonderful interview. All right? You take care. All right. Joe Larry, everybody. You can see he was well worth the wait. Symptoms, yes. He's still dealing with them, and he's going to work through them. And what a great conversation. And that leads to what Wabanya Henderson says. She misses church, and that's a good point. Some churches are back in the sanctuary with limited capacity. Most of them are still online, and you can do parking lots, but it's still a challenge. Karen says, same here. She misses going to church. I miss seeing you, Karen. I got to tell you, I was in Newton a couple of uh, weeks ago, last weekend, and ran into someone that knew the Woods family and Karen Rivens. How about that? I know I digress. Let's go back to Erica Simonton. Beatty. Hey, Miss Erica, she says she misses church and family gatherings. So we've got some uh, church folk on here that really appreciate family and uh, really appreciate heading to the sanctuary. Karen says she misses family and work. So apparently uh, COVID has impacted her workplace. So the question of the day, please share why you're watching. I appreciate you all hopping on and uh, just tuning in and, and getting the information because that's how we uh, that's how we educate one another. So Pre-COVID-19 things that you missed the most. I'd love to hear more from you and see how you're dealing with it. Uh, hugs, date nights, dinner with friends, uh, people watching all uh, make 
uh, they made a Huffington Post uh, list for the things people miss most during COVID. Uh, date night, um, we went out for um, Valentine's Day and, you know, obviously they separate you. You got to make sure you've got your mask on and getting a reservation is a challenge. Of course, we didn't go to that Monday. Not that that's much different from uh, heading out for a major holiday like that. I'm not sure who is calling on my phone right now, which should have been blocked. But in the meantime, uh, let's keep it rolling, talking about what we're talking about now. Things that you missed the most as a result of uh, pre-COVID, things that you were doing. I'll tell you a big adjustment for us has been my son's basketball games because, you know, we weren't able to attend and then they might, they were thinking about pausing it and then parents only could attend and then it was volunteers. And I'm thinking, wow, how do these kids even keep it straight? Because it's back and forth, you know, uh, yeah, you can, no, you can. And think about all the things that they normally do as students in school that they're not able to do, not to mention on the college level, my goodness, trying to have a regular college experience. So let's talk about other headlines uh, that we need to talk about right now. And uh, that's keep your guard up. That's the warning now that we're getting from Governor Cooper. And that's, uh, there are a number of newly reported cases and hospitalizations that continue to drop, but the governor plans to issue a new COVID-19 executive order next week. So we need to be on the lookout. He says, and I quote, we're not out of the woods, so I don't know what to expect from that. But also on the state level, parents, students, and teachers, they're waiting to see if the governor will veto. It's a new bill that requires state schools to provide some form of in-person learning. The governor says the bill doesn't provide enough COVID safety measures. And, of course, it will be interesting to figure out what's going to happen with that. Because, you know, a lot of teachers are saying before we head back, look, we need to be vaccinated or we need more safety measures in place. Now, today's also shifting gears a little bit. The day, today is the day that the homeless must move out of their tent city uh, location near uptown. And this camp, they're not getting moved because of COVID. It's because it's infested with rats and the city has called it a safety hazard. So about 150 to 200 people have been living in the tents at one point. And the county is asking landlords to provide long-term housing for these guys. And you know, the unfortunate part is the city and the county uh, from all reports, they weren't on the same page and they had a public back and forth about how this should be handled. And the question is kind of like, you know, th did y'all not think about this before or did you really think this was going to play out uh, long term and keep going on and on and on? You know, it's so unfortunate that it was able to set up. But we've known for a while that we've got a, a, an affordable housing problem here in Charlotte and Mecklenburg County. It's not just the city. And so the tent city situation has been able to kind of grow and this problem manifests like it was going to go away. And of course, we know that's not going to happen. Well, Vanya Henderson says we we get we got to keep the faith. And speaking of keeping the faith, uh, I want to send condolences to the Henderson family. I appreciate you hopping on and taking the time to even share with us. You know, on Sunday mornings, we have a group that love on and hug one another and just encourage one another. And that's what we're trying to do here. But the Henderson family, the young lady that uh, lost her life by an accident on Monday is uh, Wavanya's niece. So uh, condolences to the Henderson family as they navigate and work through this. And I'm sure you'll hear more about that. I also want to uplift one other thing that I thought was interesting. You know, Mecklenburg County and the United House of Prayer, the whole back and forth about them having a service. And now uh, Mecklenburg County Health they are partnering with the United House of Prayer for All People on Saturday. So tomorrow from 9 until 3, they're having a COVID-19 vaccination clinic. And that's good to hear. Good, good stuff. It's going to be at the Mother House, the Beatty Sport Road location. Uh, you see the hotline number there, 980-314-9400. And the clinic is open to groups 1 and 2, healthcare workers and individuals 65 and older, and they will need to make an appointment and they can register by calling that number, 980-314-9400. Uh, 9400 you know we had a lot of conversation about the united house of prayer and how they were being handled in the media and how uh, the discrepancy with mecklenburg county health and so now they're working together um to do the vaccination clinic and that's really good news to hear i see maya has hopped on maya can uh can made uh, is great great people thank you for hopping on and i see now you are sharing your prayers and condolences with uh wavanya henderson so we appreciate that as well we're getting ready to wrap things up. What a great show. What a great Friday. And we certainly appreciate it. Salute to producer Amelia for pulling it all together, making sure that we stay on point and stay on time. 
And uh, I, I invite you all, you can join me on this Sunday, uh, Sounds of Inspiration. I'm still there Sunday mornings and I kick off at 7 a.m. You can go 103.3, 100.5, or you can check us out online. Just tell Alexa, I want to listen to WGIV and she'll bring it on on TuneIn if you can't get it on regular radio. talk about uh, things that are going on in our community and things that impact us. And I always ask everyone, please share canceling COVID. One of the things that I was sharing is there are a lot of people doing testing and it kind of piqued my interest on how am I seeing all these testing locations? If you're looking for any type of opportunity, that's where we're heading to normalize testing. And Dr. Black, and you know, so many guests have shared that with us, that that's the, that's the future, education and testing. So Make sure you take advantage of testing. And we're not talking about just one time, an ongoing set of testing. So I'm going to wrap things up. As always, the last challenges make you better, not bitter. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Please share uh, this show. Share Canceling Global will be back on Wednesday. Uh, Make sure you have a great weekend. Join me on Sunday. And together, we will cancel COVID. Thanks, everybody. And take care.